Good afternoon and welcome to the Thursday Service of Healing for June 10th, 2021. We're coming to you from St. Stephen's and we are presenting the service on behalf of St. Stephen's and the community of St. Gabriel as well. One note about today's liturgy, we're using the readings from tomorrow's feast, June 11th. St. Barnabas will be also be a second collect after the service of healing collect. And I think we're ready to go. So if you're ready, we're ready and let's begin. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Glorious God, we commend to your loving care all who suffer especially those who come here seeking your healing grace for themselves or for others. Give them patience and hope in their distress. Strengthen and uphold them in mind and body. And grant by your intervention that all your people may be made whole according to your desire through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the second colic. Let us pray. Grant, O oh God, that we may follow the example of your faithful servant Barnabas, who, seeking not his own renown, but the well-being of your church, gave, genero gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and spread of the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now we have the psalms and appointed readings for the day. Our first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor praise to idols. See the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, this praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its towns lift up their voice, the villages that Kadar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Salah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song for today is Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. The descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see the desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. 
They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. Our second reading for today is a reading according to the book of Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone is not, will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our listening of healing. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick or injured, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, healthcare workers, and all others who minister to those suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying a peace and holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Please do so either aloud where you are or in the silence of your heart. Please keep in your prayers both communities of St. Stephen's and St. Gabriel's. Please keep in your prayers the repose of the soul of Bobby, a dear friend of Sue's. We would also like to keep Sue's in our prayers. Please pray for the health of Bertha and her family. We would also like to pray for Sharita. Please pray for Miss Anne and her great aunt, Grace Hawkins. We'd also like to send prayers of healing for Flo. We would also like to pray for the victims in need of justice and peace. We pray for the victims of cruelty and oppression. We pray for all the victims of any kind of psychological, sexual, or verbal abuse. We pray for those who suffer from any form of addiction. We pray for all of those experiencing home, food, and financial insecurity. We pray for all those who feel invisible. May you be seen. We also pray for all the victims of the coronavirus and those who have died and those who are ill. Now let us pray. Open to us your healing power, O oh God. We entrust ourselves to your care, knowing that you are doing for us and for all the world far better things than we can ask or imagine. With you as our companion and guide, strengthen us 
to hope for all that is good and to fear no evil. For your love is stronger than death and your faithfulness reaches to the heavens and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and to the ages of ages. And now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now we come to the laying on of hands and anointing. O Lord, Holy Father, giver of health and salvation, send your Holy Spirit to sanctify this oil that as your apostles anointed many who were sick and healed them, so may those who in faith and repentance receive this holy unction be made whole. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And now on behalf of all of you who seek healing for you, yourselves, for those who you wish to be healed, I will do the following. I lay my hands upon all of you and anoint you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, praying that you will be strengthened and filled with God's grace, and that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Amen. And may the blessing, peace, exquisite care and healing grace of God be with you on this day and on all days going forward. Amen. And now the concluding collect. <clears throat> May the God who goes before you through desert places by night and by day be your companion and guide. May your journey be with the saints and may the Holy Spirit be your strength and Christ your clothing of light in whose name we pray. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And now the final prayer, blessing, and commitment to healing. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Christ, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. May God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. And now our commitment to the Ministry of Healing from Henry Nouwen. The great paradox of ministry, therefore, is that we minister above all with our weakness, a weakness that invites us to receive 
from those to whom we go. The more in touch we are with our own need for healing and salvation, the more open we are to receive in gratitude what others have to offer us. The true skill of ministry is to help fearful and often oppressed men and women become aware of their own gifts by receiving them in gratitude. In that sense, ministry becomes the skill of active dependency, willing to be dependent on what others have to give, but often do not realize they have. Before I dismiss a word about Barnabas, in this season of Pentecost, it's important to remember that the disciples were appointed to be many things. Among those things, they were appointed to be healers. And Paul, especially, along with Barnabas, led the way. Peter was in the background, making sure everything was right. But in terms of missions and ministry, no one could outperform. I don't mean to use those valuative words, but Paul did everything in the beginning, and Barnabas was his faithful compatriot. So remember, when Barnabas' feast comes up tomorrow, remember that he was one of the 12 healers, and they took that very seriously. And in the Gospel, which you heard today, is the story of that healing, and it's the story of what Jesus expected from his apostles. So remember Barnabas. And now with healing, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you for being with us on this Thursday service of healing for June 10th. It's hot outside and it's hot in the church, but that's okay because that's that's what services are for, to experience all that we can about the real world. So thank you again for being with us. I hope you will join us again next time. And don't forget Compline tonight and the Friday Reflection tomorrow, which I can say will be about some of the statues, some of the marbles in the church and what they mean for our practice of faith. Goodbye.